Season's greetings. What's the limit of x times tangent of 1 over x as x approaches infinity? This limit is often evaluated using L'Hopital's rule, but we're going to do it without L'Hopital's rule because I think it's a fun challenge to try to evaluate limits using more basic strategies. So let's do it. We've got x times tangent, so your first thought might be to try using the limit product rule. Try to split this into the limit of x times the limit of the tangent. That's not going to work here though because x is going to infinity. So the limit of x as x goes to infinity obviously is just infinity and we can't use the product rule when we've got an infinite limit. But is there a different way I could write this limit so that I can use the product rule? Well, let's see. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine. If you know your basic trigonometry, then you know that. So I'm going to write the limit as x approaches infinity of x times tangent of 1 over x, the limit we're trying to evaluate. Let's rewrite it, but with tangent as sine over cosine. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of x times sine of 1 over x divided by cosine of 1 over x. Again, that's because tangent is sine over cosine. That's how it's defined. Okay, now do you see a way that we could use the limit product rule? I notice that we've got x times sine of 1 over x, and that is a familiar limit to me. I did a video previously showing what that limit is equal to with x approaching infinity, and I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson, so check that out if you're interested. If you're not familiar with that limit, I will try to give a quick recap here. But the key is, I see something, x times sine of 1 over x, that is familiar to me, so now I'm going to try to split up the limit using the limit product rule. So the idea is that this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of, let me take this part that's familiar to me, x times sine of 1 over x, because I know how to evaluate that, this limit multiplied by the limit of the cosine part, the limit as x goes to infinity of, since we took the x sine of 1 over x out, what's left is 1 over cosine of 1 over x. So now, if I can evaluate these individual limits, I will be done. Now, how do we evaluate this part, x times sine of 1 over x? Well, I'd like to not have a 1 over x inside my sine function, so I'm going to re-express that using another variable that I'll introduce. Let's say that theta is 1 over x. That way I can have a nice just sine of theta instead of sine of 1 over x. If we're going to use theta instead of x though, we've got to make sure we know how to re-express this limit in terms of theta x is approaching infinity. That's where we are taking our limit. So what's happening to theta as x approaches infinity? Well, let's write that here. The limit of theta as x approaches infinity is what? Well, theta is 1 over x, so as x approaches infinity, this is going to be 0. It's just 1 divided by a really big number. Also, Notice that it's not just 1 over x that appears in our expression, but also just plain old x. So if 1 over x is theta, what is x? Well, if we invert both sides of this equation, we would see that x is equal to 1 over theta. Another way to think of it is just multiply both sides by x, divide both sides by theta. That gives us that x equals 1 over theta. So now we can re-express these limits in terms of theta. Let's do it. So this is equal to, this is equal to the limit as theta approaches 
zero. Because when x approaches infinity, theta, which is one over x, is approaching zero. So the limit as theta approaches zero. However, it's approaching zero from the right specifically. That's because theta is one over x, x is approaching positive infinity, so these are going to be really small positive numbers. Theta is not approaching zero from both sides, it's only approaching zero from the right. Small detail, not really important here, but I do want to point that out. All right, then we have x times sine of one over x. We said that x is one over theta, and then sine of one over x, that's just sine of theta, since theta is one over x. Now for this limit here, I guess we don't really need to, to re-express it with theta, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So this is times the limit as theta approaches zero from the right of one over cosine of one over x. So that's one over cosine of theta. All right, we're almost done. Now, we've got the limit, this one here. I'm gonna bring sine of theta and theta into the same fraction so that we can really see this. Theta is approaching zero from the right. We've got the limit of sine of theta over theta. And this is a classic trigonometric limit that you should know. The limit as theta approaches zero in both directions, so in this case it's only approaching from the right, that's just fine. The limit of sine of theta over theta with theta approaching zero is one. All right, so we'll revisit that in just a second. But then we also have to multiply this by the limit of one over cosine of theta as theta approaches zero from the right. Here, we can just do substitution since cosine is continuous and defined at zero. Not only is it defined, but it's non-zero. If we plug zero into cosine, what do we get? We get one. So the limit of one over cosine of theta as theta approaches zero from the right is one. It's one over one, which is one. Just to be really detailed, I'll write it as one over one for now. All right, now again, like I said, sine of theta over theta with theta approaching zero, that has a limit of one. It's a fundamental trig limit that you should remember. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that if you're interested, but make sure you remember that one. Sine of a thing over that thing as the thing approaches zero is one. In this case, we're approaching zero just from the right. That definitely doesn't change the limit. It's still one, and then we've got times one over one, so just times one, and that is it. So we see that the limit of x times tangent of one over x as x approaches infinity is equal to one. So this function has a horizontal asymptote as x goes to infinity of one. A very similar proof will show that you have an equal horizontal asymptote of one as x goes to negative infinity. So you can try that yourself. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>